Okay, so let me reintroduce again the paper. So the paper is highly efficient OT-based multiplication protocols. This is a paper from Iftach Heitner, Nicolas Macriannis, Samuel Ranellucci, and the Eliad Tzfadia. So, and uh, uh, Nicolas will give the talk. Hello, hello, okay, it's working. Sorry. Yeah. So that's okay. Uh, okay, so let's uh, start. Hi, I'm Nikos. I'm here to talk about uh, highly efficient OT-based multiplication protocols. This is a joint work with Iftah, uh, Samuel, and uh, Eliad. So we're going to look at the problem of uh, two-party multiplication, which we define as follows. So two parties, P1 and P2, holding inputs X and Y respectively, want to calculate additive shares of the product of their uh, inputs. So the functionality takes X and Y uh, from each of the parties, and it returns random S1 and S2, such that S1 plus S2 is equal to uh, X times Y. So in this talk, I'm gonna focus on the field of integers uh, modulo some large prime Q but our uh, results uh, extend to any field of uh, odd characteristic. Okay, so why is this an interesting problem? So two-party multiplication is important both uh, theoretically and practically. So first, two-party multiplication is the fundamental building block in uh, arithmetic 2PC. It holds a role analogous to that of OT in Boolean MPC. So right now I'm assuming some familiarity with OT, oblivious transfer, but I am going to define it later on. So in particular, multiplication protocols are used extensively to generate uh, Beaver triplets and authenticated triplets. That is correlated data for general purpose MPC. I will remind you that these triplets um, allow for fast information theoretic MPC because all of the cryptography and most of the computation has been pre-processed in the multiplication protocol. Another application, and perhaps the main motivation of this work, is for realizing a threshold ECDSA. So the ECDSA scheme is arguably the most popular signature scheme in the blockchain space. And there are many companies, including the one I work for, uh, that, are, <coughs> that are offering MPC signing commercially. So we can use MPC to thresholdize ECDSA. Sorry, that's not a word. Uh, and since ECDSA is simply a shallow circuit over ZQ, the resulting protocol can benefit from a highly efficient uh, multiplication protocol over ZQ. Uh, right, so finally, if you're familiar with the OLE functionality, let me mention that multiplication is almost the same functionality as oblivious linear evaluation. The two are essentially equivalent with very small overhead, and all of the above holds true for the OLE functionality as well. Okay, so let's dive into the fun stuff. Uh, there are several paradigms for uh, realizing two-party multiplication, roughly falling into one of two uh, categories. So there are protocols based on homomorphic encryption, like Palier encryption, and there are protocols uh, based on oblivious uh, transfer. This is a very rough picture. Uh, for the most part, protocols based on uh, homomorphic encryption have good communication, but they can be quite expensive in computation, and they also require stronger assumptions that is stronger than what is implied from, uh, general secure, for general secure uh, computation. On the other hand, Protocols based on oblivious transfer use minimal assumptions because they use an MPC complete primitive and they have good uh, uh, computational complexity. However, they can be quite expensive in communication. So to illustrate, 
for multiplying two 32 bytes values, current protocols require tens to hundreds of kilobytes of communication, depending on the target security. Okay, so in this protocol, we present a new OT based uh, multiplication protocol, and the main challenge was to improve the uh, communication complexity. Good. So before I give more background on uh, OT and OT based protocols, I want to quickly define what an OT based protocol is. So simply put, a protocol is OT based if the only underlying cryptographic primitive is, it uses is the OT. So slightly more formally, we define protocols in the OT hybrid model where the parties have access to an oracle uh, uh, calculating the OT, the oblivious transfer. So I will remind you that OT takes two inputs uh, from the sender and one bit uh, from the receiver, and it delivers that value indexed by the bits to the uh, receiver. Good. So it goes without saying that protocols in the OT hybrid model give rise to uh, protocols in the sander model by simply uh, replacing the Oracle call with the secure protocol for OT. Uh, right, so complexity costs in this model are broken down as follows. So we have the usual suspects of computation communication around complexity, but we also want to keep track of the following. So on one hand, we have the number of Oracle calls to the OT but also the size of the input of the sender, so the size of the Zs. This metric, so the size of the Zs, is important because the longer the inputs uh, in the OT, the more data has to be communicated when compiled in the plain model, okay? Uh, so in the rest of the talk, I'm gonna refer to this cost as a communication cost, uh, even though this is a misnomer in the OT hybrid model. Good. Okay, so what do we know about OT-based uh, multiplication? So as far as we know, I mean, as far as I know, there are two uh, uh, templates for OT-based multiplication, one by Gilboa and one by uh, Ishai and, um, and others. So Gilboa's protocol achieves uh, better performance with only log Q OT calls and uh, communication. Both protocols only achieve uh, semi-honest security. <clears throat> Gilboa's protocol can be compiled. I mean, both protocols can be compiled, but Gilboa's protocol has, uh, uh, comp uh, can be compiled for malicious security, uh, 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 but not cheaply. And the protocol of uh, uh, Ishai uh, uh, and others uh, admits a malicious variant under a non-standard assumption. Good, so let me turn to our results. Okay, so we present a, a new protocol in the OT hybrid model. Our protocol is almost maliciously secure in that it achieves a high level of security out of the box. In the next slide, I will explain exactly what this means. Furthermore, our protocol admits a batching variant for computing many multiplications when one party is using the same input for each uh, uh, instance. The batching variant of our protocol is more efficient than simply repeating the base protocol beta times. Uh, for malicious security, our protocol can be compiled very cheaply, both for the single instance case and the batch variants. And our protocol offers an X2 improvement in communication compared to the state of the art. So to elaborate on the first item, the almost maliciously secure. In the paper, we show the following uh, theorem. So let me state it informally before I startle you with the formulas. So intuitively, depending on the adversary, we show that either the protocol is fully secure or the honest party is utterly unpredictable in an interesting way. So slightly more formally, our protocol exhibits the following uh, uh, dichotomy. Either the protocol can be simulated in the ideal model with two to the minus kappa over four statistical closeness, or the honest output has entropy, mean entropy, at least kappa over four, uh, 
given both the adversary's view and the honest party's input. This means that the output is highly unpredictable under attack, even if the adversary knew uh, the input. So in the batching variant uh, uh, of our protocol, we show that each of the honest outputs are either well-formed or they are unpredictable given all of the uh, uh, honest parties' uh, inputs. So in the paper, we, we formally defined this, uh, our predictability notion via a functionality that we call weak malt. And in the next slide, I will argue that weak malt is useful in its own right. Good, so turning to applications, right away I want to stress that this unpredictability notion is very useful for obtaining malicious security. It suffices to perform a single check to verify for correctness and to detect malicious behavior. What's more, this check can be very simple. For instance, in a Q order group generated by G, it suffices for P1 to check the displayed inequality. So I'm assuming here that the uh, group elements are public and they are well formed. This, this, this assumption may seem restrict restrictive, but this check can be generalized to arbitrary settings very cheaply. I'm not going to elaborate on this, but feel free to ask me uh, uh, later on. Good. Furthermore, for certain protocols, it is enough to realize the weak mold functionality because Correctness checks, like the one I just described, are built into the protocols. For example, in the threshold ECDSA of uh, Lindel and Noth, the parties are instructed. The parties are instructed. What are the parties instructed? Okay, I have a typo. Never mind. Uh, so the parties are instructed to check the output in uh, an oblivious way. And therefore, our protocol can be used as is in the threshold ECDSA protocol of uh, Lindel and Noth. Right, so finally, the batching variant of our protocol is useful for generating beaver triplets and uh, authenticated triplets in the pre-processing uh, model. Good, so I'm going to conclude the first part of my talk with a comparison to previous works. So our protocol prescribes um, N calls to the OT, where N is log Q plus a statistical parameter uh, kappa. Our protocol uh, prescribes uh, uh, half as many OT calls as other maliciously, uh, not OT calls, communication uh, compared to other maliciously secure uh, protocols. And in the batching variant for batches of size beta, our protocol scales with log Q rather than N. And so we only pay for the security parameter once rather than for each uh, instance. So effectively, our protocol achieves the same amortized cost as uh, Gilboa's protocol while achieving full security instead of uh, simply semi-honest security. Good. So, right. So in, uh, in the remainder of the talk, I'm going to uh, give you the technical overview. So first, I want to introduce the following notation. So I'm going to denote... Uh, vectors with uh, bold face letters and the coordinates with uh, non bold uh, letters. So for the inner product, I'm going to use uh, uh, pointy brackets. Uh, and I will write u star v for the pointwise uh, product of two vectors, also known as the, the pointwise product, also known as the Hadamard product. So u star v is a vector. Okay, so let's have a look at the protocol. So the protocol consists of two phases. In the first phase, the parties make n parallel calls to the OT. Uh, so n parallel calls as follows. So party P2 samples values in minus one and one, and it uses those values as inputs to the OT. Let me stress that I'm switching conventions between Boolean zero one for the input bits to minus one one. Uh, right, so party one samples delta, uh, samples n field elements, and, and playing as the OT sender uses inputs plus x and minus x, which is masked by the same value uh, delta, and a different delta is used in each uh, OT call. 
so the OT call concludes with the receiver uh, obtaining uh, the value zi uh, from the functionality. Good. So in the second phase of the protocol, P2 samples a random vector V such that the inner product of T and V is equal to its input, and it sends that vector to P1. At this point, the protocol concludes, and the parties output the following. So P1 outputs the inner product of, of delta and V, so the randomness it sampled and the vector it received. And P2 outputs uh, the inner product of Z and V, so the output from the OT and the vector it sampled uh, locally. Um, so the, the, the sum of the outputs uh, uh, gives you the desired result for, because of the following calculation. So Z minus delta is equal to X times T. The X comes out of the inner product and T inner product with V is equal to the input uh, Y. Good, so that was the protocol. Uh, what about security? So the first thing to notice is that this protocol is uh, fully secure against the corrupted P2. Indeed, the only way P2 can deviate is by sending a different vector V. However, this behavior is equivalent to choosing a different input. And so this execution for a, a corrupted P2 can be simulated in the ideal model by simply extracting the right input. The interesting case is what happens when P1 is, uh, is, is corrupted. So the problem with P1 is that it may use inconsistent inputs in the OT. Specifically, instead of using well-formed inputs values across the different OT calls, P1 may use inconsistent values. The result is in the security analysis that there is no well-formed input for the corrupted party. And this execution cannot be simulated in the ideal world. Right, so this is where I dichotomy theorem comes into play. And now I'm gonna uh, dive into the nitty gritty of the, of the analysis. So it's easy to show, easy, I mean, it's easy if you write it down, that uh, the, off, the honest output is offset by some value V star T, inner product with D where D is the smallest value in this set. It's, I mean, what this set is is not very interesting, but intuitively, what this means, what, what, this, uh, what, 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 uh, what, uh, what vector D is, is that it captures how much A deviates from the protocol because it is the smallest shift to the inputs which would yield well-formed values. So I will spare you the elementary algebra, and I'm just going to say that if D is very close to zero, then, uh, uh, or if D is, is, is the zero vector, then the party behaves honestly. And if D is very far from zero, then there are many inconsistencies uh, in the OT. Good, so we show that when D is close to zero, then the offset, uh, and the inputs are, are, are two to the minus cup over four close to independent. And we leverage this fact to show that uh, this execution can be simulated in the ideal world with two to the minus cup over four statistical closeness. On the other hand, if D is far from zero, then we show that the offset has mean entropy, sorry. Uh, kappa over four, given both V and Y. So the reason this is true is because there is a huge number of T's, so vector T's, for any fixed V uh, and Y. And to show this result, we use a third moment uh, concentration inequality. And the reason we go to the third moment is because we want to match the target security from the, from the first case. Good. So before I conclude, let me just present the batching variant of our protocol. I will describe it by comparing it to the single instance case. So here, party P2 has many inputs. And the parties want to calculate shares of each of the multiplications of X with YI. So the first phase of the protocol is very similar to the single instance case, except that now the parties make many more calls to the OT. How many more? So the number N uh, depends on the batch size, and the parties are required to call the OT an additional log Q times. 
um, an additional log q times. OK, I don't have a lot of time. But OK, so in step two, uh, P2 samples a fresh uh, V for each of his inputs, so a new vector. And it sends those vectors to P1. Uh, the protocol terminates, and the outputs are defined analogously to the single instance uh, case. Good. Uh, that was the batching variant. So let me summarize very quickly and conclude. So we present a new OT-based protocol. It is sufficiently secure for some applications. It is almost as efficient as the best performing uh, state-of-the-art semi-honest protocols in the batching variant. And, and in the fully malicious variant, it is uh, twice as efficient in communication compared to the state-of-the-art. Uh, some open questions to conclude. So can we push the efficiency further? Can we go beyond uh, Gilboa's log Q OTs times log Q communication? Uh, can we show that the IPS protocol realizes weak malt? That was the original question that we tried and failed uh, to answer. And finally, what about lower bounds? Maybe OT is inherent, maybe OT multiplication is inherently wasteful in communication. Maybe Gilboa's barrier is uh, unavoidable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any question? Thank you. Thank you very much for a very nice talk. Uh, just a small uh, question that, uh, as you have uh, highlighted in your construction, uh, the corrupted P1 uh, scenario as well, you have discussed it. Sorry. So, you have discussed the corrupted P1 party one uh, parameters in your construction. So my question is that, have you considered the uh, applicability of the MITM in your construction? Of the MIT, of the what? Yes, a man in the middle. Ah, uh, man in the middle. Uh, I'm, yes, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Like, so I said that because you're calculating multi-party uh, protocol, so you're, uh, during the construction, have you, while evaluating the vulnerabilities or its weakness, have you considered the MITM attack on this? So we have we have not considered that. And attack, the other yeah. thing is, is the uh, your construction can be a based of a new secret sharing scheme, or it can be used. If it can be based on a new secret sharing scheme, yeah. uh, maybe yes, like maybe. Thank you. Any more question? In the meantime, uh, I do have a question actually. So you, you said that um, when you showed the efficiency of your protocol, you said that it's in the random oracle model, right? The, yes. Uh, right. Where do you need the random oracle? Like, so uh, I need the random oracle model uh, because, because without the random oracle, I need to pay for communication for all of these vectors I'm sending outside of the OT. But these vectors are just like random. So I could like just send a succinct representation, like a succinct seed through the random oracle instead of like sending all of those vectors, the Vs basically. So But I suppose you need to sample you you sample also using the random oracle, right? Those seeds. Or you why can't you use, for example, a PRG and send short seeds over the channel if that's the problem? If I can say uh, because a PRG would like uh so I can't, I can't send the, no, a PRG wouldn't be random enough, no? If I send the seed. It depends who samples the seed, I mean, like. Yeah. Uh, if it's the honest party that samples the seed, I mean, it should be fine, right? I see, okay, yes, good point, right. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe you can get away with it if you, right. Anyway, okay, maybe, yeah, we can discuss. Any more question? No, okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so the next uh, talk will be uh, recorded. So are we ready for the, yeah. So the next talk will be uh, practical, non-interactive, publicly verifiable secret sharing with thousands of parties. Uh, this, is, this is a 